Okay, it's time for everyone's favorite video. Well, it's my favorite video. It's the annual preferential ballot experiment. This is where I collect real ballots from SAG voters and industry professionals to see if we can predict best picture. And this makes it the fifth, fifth? Yes, the fifth year in a row of doing this. And many people all the time ask me, why does it take so long to post this video? The answer, it's actually very simple. It, it takes a long time to collect all these ballots. A lot of messaging, a lot of explaining, a lot of polite pestering, but we officially have the ballots right here in this little Ziploc bag and we are ready to go. I also, by the way, have a special surprise towards the end of the video I think you're gonna really like, so stick around. If this is your first time watching this video, by the way, I'd consider watching a previous year where I talk about how the, the ballot system works and I'll put a link in the description below. In short, the Academy uses a preferential ballot and I'm gonna be counting these ballots in the same way the Academy would. And in doing so, hopefully, we can get a little peek inside which films the Academy might end up liking. But let's just jump right in. Below you see I have this year's fantastic, fantastic nominees. And I have here 100 ballots, again, collected from SAG members, industry professionals. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort these ballots and sort them by everyone's number one choice. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I just sorted everyone's number one choice. And again, like I do every year, I'm gonna be using these chips to basically represent uh, these ballots. So each chip is gonna represent everyone's number one choice. And here were the results. Coming in last place, Maestro with two votes. Then coming in second to last, we have Kills of the Flower Moon with four points. We have Past Lives with five. Anatomy of the Fall receives seven. Both American Fiction and Barbie got eight points each. And then we got Zone of Interest actually with 10 points. We got Poor Things with 11. Then we got The Holdovers in second place with 12. And then coming in first place with 33 votes, Oppenheimer. So again, second place was 12 votes. First place, 33 votes, Oppenheimer in first. I feel like Oppenheimer's kind of man-spreading here in Barbie's space. All right, so uh, Oppenheimer's clearly in the lead, 33 votes, but remember a movie needs to have 51% of the vote. We have 100 ballots here, so they need to receive 51 chips. And it's not there yet, it's at 33, so we have to eliminate the film in last place, that is Maestro. So I'm afraid Maestro is Maestro. <laughs> Stupid. I don't need, I don't need an Oscar. Okay, so Maestro has been eliminated, but we don't throw these Maestro ballots away. We still do care about the Maestro lovers. We, we want to make sure their voices are heard. So we're going to go ahead and look at their number two choice and redistribute the votes to the number two choice. And the second choice for this was American Fiction and Anatomy of the Fall. That was their second choice, American Fiction and Anatomy of the Fall. So I just go ahead and redistribute the votes. American Fiction and Anatomy of the Fall. All right, well that hasn't changed anything obviously, so we have to do another elimination. And in last place currently is Killers of the Flower Moon. So we're gonna go ahead and take that way. I'm sorry, but the Killers of the Flower Moon has been eliminated. Okay, and let's go ahead and grab the Kills of the Flyer Moon ballots. And let's look at the Kills of the Flyer Moon's second choices. So we have Kills of the Flyer Moon, and then we have Zone of Interest, Kills of the Flyer Moon Oppenheimer, Kills of the Flyer Moon Poor Things, Killers of the Flyer Moon Past Lives. So let's go ahead and redistribute the votes here. Kills of the Flyer Moon, vote to Past Lives. One vote for Oppenheimer. It was one vote for Poor Things. And one vote here to add to the zone of interest. 
All right, so Oppenheimer doesn't have the 51 chip, so now we eliminate the film in last place. Currently, that is past lives. So past lives is eliminated. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and redistribute the past lives uh, ballots. So let's see, what do we got here? We have one for the holdovers. Past lives, one for Oppenheimer. Past lives, second choice was Anatomy of a Fall. Again, so this ballot here, this was originally Killers of the Flower Moon. It was redistributed to the past lives ballots. Past lives have been eliminated, so this guy's number one and two was eliminated. And so his third place votes gets that vote, the poor things. So let's go ahead and redistribute those votes. All right, let's do a little recap on score. Right now we have currently Oppenheimer with 35 votes. Then we have Holdovers with 13 votes. Poor Things with 13 votes. Zone of Interest now has 11. Anatomy Fall is growing a little bit here with 11 votes. American Fiction has a nine and Barbie still has eight. All right, so now we do another elimination round and before Anatomy has seven votes, now it has 11. Barbie hasn't grown any votes. It's now in last place. So Barbie has been eliminated. Bye Barbie. So now we're gonna go ahead and take the Barbie ballots and redistribute the Barbie ballots. So what do we got here? We have Oppenheimer, Barbie, Poor Things. So let's go ahead and redistribute the votes. We have three went to Oppenheimer. And we had three went to Holdovers. One to Poor Things. And then one more here to American Fiction. All right, so Oppenheimer has 38 votes. The Holdovers has 16. So we have to do another elimination. And now in last place, it's 11, this is 10. American Fiction is out. So American Fiction has been eliminated. All right, let's go ahead and redistribute the American Fiction votes. All right, so that gave Oppenheimer a nice little boost there. It gave it five points. So now Oppenheimer's at 43. Holdovers is at 18 now. And still, no one has 51 chips. So we need to do another elimination. In last place, we have Zone of Interest with 11 points. And we have Anatomy of the Fall with 11 points. But since it's a tie, we have to go back to who had the most first place votes. And the most first place votes was Zone of Interest over Anatomy Fall. So unfortunately, Anatomy of a Fall has been eliminated. All right, let's go ahead and redistribute the Anatomy of the Fall's ballots. So we have Anatomy of the Fall, Past Lives, that's already been eliminated. Barbie's been eliminated. Poor Things. Anatomy of the Fall, Oppenheimer. Anatomy of the Fall, Past Lives, Holdovers, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and redistribute those. All right, let's do a little recap on the score. We have four movies still in it, and we have Oppenheimer now with 47 chips. It just needs four more chips. We have Holdovers with 22. Poor Things with 19 and Zone of Interest with 12. So still, we still need four more chips for an Oppenheimer, so we have to do another elimination round. So unfortunately, that means Zone of Interest has now been eliminated. Okay, let's go ahead and take away the Zone of Interest ballots and let's redistribute these ballots. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have Zone of Interest and then we have American Fiction, that's gone. So then we go to Holdovers, Zone of Interest, Past Lives is gone, and then we do Anatomy of the Fall, that's gone, and then we go to Alpenheimer. All right, I just went through the Zone of Interest ballots and I've redistributed their votes based on the next film that is the highest ranked on their ballot that's still in play. And what we have here is we have six votes went to Oppenheimer, 
we had three votes went to holdovers. And then we had three votes went to poor things. All right, well, there we have it. We have a winner. Oppenheimer wins with 53 points. And since doing this experiment, I believe that we have the most dominating win so far. Last year, Everything Everywhere All at Once won also in this round, earning 51 chips. Here, Oppenheimer has 53. Of course, if Oppenheimer didn't have the 51 chips, we would have to do another elimination and eliminate the film in last place, which in this case would be Poor Things. And the Poor Things ballots would then decide Best Picture. Holdovers would need practically every single one of these votes in order to win, which doesn't seem incredibly likely. But you're probably curious like I am, like what is ranked higher on the Poor Things ballot? So let's sort through these ballots just, just to see. We Oppenheimer already won, but let's just, let's just take a look anyways. So Poor Things, then we have Oppenheimer. All right, so I just went through the Poor Things ballots, and if I were to redistribute those votes, 10 of them would go to the holdovers, and 12 of them would go to Oppenheimer. So what does that tell me? It tells me that Oppenheimer performs really well on the preferential ballot. Last year, I remember Everything Everywhere All at Once did really, really well in the first round, even more than Oppenheimer. It got 42 first place votes. Here, Oppenheimer had 33, but it took so many rounds for Everything Everywhere All at Once to collect that 51 points. It took Oppenheimer the same number of rounds, but it ended up with more points in the end. I think last year, Everything Everywhere All at Once had kind of that love it or hate it thing, but there was a lot of people who loved it. So it did really well in the first place votes and, and then it just took a while to collect those second and thirds. I'm also really proud with how Zone of Interest and Anatomy of the Fall did. You know, the majority of voters who participate in this, I would say are SAG voters. Uh, I know they didn't get the screeners for these films. So seeing them do well here, regardless of that, I imagine that's a very good sign. I think that's that's probably telling to the idea that this is probably gonna do much stronger at the Oscars. Um, some more interesting things to note, Oppenheimer led obviously with the first place votes, but also led with second place votes, followed by the holdovers. Another thing to note, Maestro had the most last place votes, followed by Zone of Interest. So Zone of Interest has a, I think a passion there too, if you love it or hate it. But all in all, I think these results kind of make a lot of sense to me. The Holdovers got second, Poor Things got third, followed by Zone of Interest and Enemy of the Fall. I think that kind of feels kind of right. But I will say the gap between first and second place was pretty wide. So there's a lot of passion for Oppenheimer. It's kind of a perfect preferential ballot uh, movie, I would say. And other than that, I think this really just shows that Oppenheimer is easily gonna win Best Picture. So this is the preferential ballot experiment. I have another fun little addition to this experiment at the end of this video, but if you just came for this experiment, I hope you enjoyed it. And if this is your first time watching, by the way, uh, welcome, welcome to the party. Also, I wanted to mention that this year I'll be conducting the same experiment that you see here, but using ballots collected by all of you. I actually announced it in my last video. So far, I've already received an incredible amount of votes so thank you for everyone who's already commented your ranking and if you wanted to vote yourself then feel free to click the link in the description below then in the comment section of that video comment your ranking and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results and seeing who will win best picture if voted by all of you okay now for that part two surprise since the Oscar race this year was pretty clear on who was gonna win best picture I decided to ask these voters to weigh in on a few more categories. I didn't want to overwhelm them, but I did ask them to vote on the acting and screenplay categories. The screenplay categories because they're, they're pretty close this year, and the acting categories because one of them is very close. And I also asked the supporting categories to kind of get a sense of accuracy. So let's see who would win based on the ballots that I collected. So paying homage to that Oppenheimer kind of marble scene, I have here a bowl of marbles. For every vote each person or movie gets, I'll add a marble to their respective class. And also, I made this portion optional for these voters, so I only collected 71 responses for these. So this is gonna be 71 responses. Let's see who's gonna get the most votes. 
Let's start with best supporting actor. Okay, I'm all set up, I'm ready to go. Got my Oppenheimer hat. I look more like Smokey the Bear, but it's okay. Let's do it. Best supporting actor. So we have a vote here for Robert Downey Jr. Another vote for Robert Downey Jr. All right, well, we have a clear winner. Robert Downey Jr. wins with, well, why don't you take a guess? I'll give you a moment to take a guess with how many marbles are in this glass. Three, two, one, 34. 34 marbles. Second place was Ryan Gosling here with 16 votes, followed by Mark Ruffalo with 11, Sterling K. Brown with seven, and then in last place, we have Robert De Niro with three votes. So, so far we know Robert Downey Jr. is gonna win the Oscar. He's won all four major precursor awards. So, you know, this doesn't surprise us, but this does pass the vibe test. So let's keep going to the best supporting actress category. All right, I just divvied up the point for Best Supporting Actress and an even more overwhelming win. Divine Joy Randolph wins by a mile with 42 votes, almost 60% of the vote. Uh, Danielle Brooks had 11, followed by Jodie Foster with eight votes, then Emily Blunt with six, and America Ferrera with four. So, so far, these are as expected, but let's see if there's a big shakeup in that Best Actor category. All right, well, Best Actor was much closer. Killian Murphy does take it in the end, though, with 26 votes compared to Paul Giamatti's 23. Coleman Domingo and Jeffrey Wright were tied with nine votes. Yes, nine votes. And Bradley Cooper was in last with four. So I would say it's pretty hard at this point to predict anyone but Killian Murphy, but maybe it's showing that Giamatti is a close second if there is a second. But yeah, I feel good with Killian Murphy, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Let's move on to Best Actress. So I know this was one that we were all very eager to see. You know, maybe this would help give us some clarification, but wow. This was not really the results I was expecting. Emma Stone wins with 33 points compared to Lily Gladstone in second place with 17. Emma Stone actually almost doubles the amount of votes that Gladstone has. And you know, this is, this is, this is making me sweat a little bit. Uh, Sandra Huller is not that far behind with 12 votes. Annette Benning has six. And then Carrie Mulligan has three. As you guys know, my recent experiment that uses a formula to predict best actress came up with Lily Gladstone having the marginal edge, but this experiment is showing that Emma Stone is the favorite, collecting as many votes actually, just as many votes as Robert Downey Jr. Now something we should probably keep in mind, this major chunk of people voting in this are SAG voters, which confuses me because SAG just went for Lily Gladstone. But again, I would say maybe that's around 65% of the people that I've collected these ballots from. And the rest are just kind of more industry professionals. So this may give credence maybe to the idea that Lily might be more popular amongst actors. But once you kind of include the other branches, it maybe tips in Emma's favor. Ultimately, I don't know how much stock you can put in this because the sample size here is much, 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 much smaller than the Academy membership. But I'm at odds though. You know, I got one experiment predicting this way. I got another experiment predicting this way. And I don't know, I think this just shows that the best actress race this year is just wild and crazy. And yeah, it definitely gives me some pause. But okay, let's move on to one of the screenplay categories, original screenplay. All right, so I sorted through the screenplay. Right now, this has holdovers with 24 votes in first place, with Anatomy of the Fall coming in second with 22 votes. Then Past Lives comes in at 16, followed by May, December with six. 
and then Maestro in last. So honestly, even though Holdovers won here, it's a very slim margin, and I know SAG voters didn't get screeners for Anatomy Falls, so I think it's just possible that that gave Holdovers a clear advantage. Anatomy is doing well, though. It's doing better than I thought it might do here. But I think if there's a spoiler, it, it's looking like the Holdovers might be the closest to beat it, but I think I'm feeling good with, with Anatomy of the Fall. But let's move on to that very tricky other category of the night, Adapted Screenplay. Okay, so leading in Adapted Screenplay, we have Oppenheimer with 20 votes, American Fiction in second with 18, Barbie with 15, Poor Things 14, and Zone of Interest with four. So if anything, for me, I think this really just shows this idea of it being a four-way race. It's real with the two leading being Oppenheimer and American Fiction. I think Barbie is not something I'm, I'm seriously considering at this point. You know, if it was in the original category, I think it probably could have won. But once you put it up against Oppenheimer and American Fiction, I, I don't think it's a real massive threat to win, especially with how Barbie's kind of been performing at the last few award shows. It nearly went blank at BAFTAs and the SAG Awards didn't award Barbie anything. So I think it's gonna be American Fiction or an Oppenheimer. It's gonna be the Critics' Choice BAFTA winner or the Best Picture screenplay pair up. But Oppenheimer just hasn't been winning places. And honestly, I feel like it should. I feel like it should win more. The way Nolan kind of like brought that film full circle, it's just brilliant. Yeah, but ultimately this gives me a little bit more to think about, especially in Best Actress. That was wild. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can post that final predictions video before Oscar day. So feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. Also comment below your thoughts on who you think will win the Oscar. And I also wanna take a quick moment if I could to thank all the industry folks who submitted a ballot to me for this experiment. Cause honestly, this really wouldn't be possible without you. So a big thank you to you if you're watching. And of course this wouldn't be possible also without you guys. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I will see you at I thought I was wearing this hat at the Oscars. Oh, also follow me on Letterboxd and Twitter, links in the bio. And remember, only you can prevent forest fires.